I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. Today's episode in 4K is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. I've always been a big fan of vampire films, and certainly one of the more popular has been the Blade series. Today on Man at Arms, we're going to be building Blade Sword. We've got quite a bit of construction to do, even though the sword looks very simple from the outside. We have those internal blades that are inside the handle that have to pop out. And the blade itself is actually made from titanium. So we're going to be forging the titanium. We're going to have to grind it, which is a very difficult task. Once everything is fitted and the handle's functional, it'll be able to turn and the blades will pop out. But there's also got to be a way to make it safe. We'll probably have to do something different so that anybody can wield it during the demo, not just Blade himself. This is a piece of titanium. It is one inch round, and I have about 13 inches of it long. This is exactly enough to make Blade's sword. Titanium has several advantages. It has half the density of steel, and it is resistant to heat. However, titanium is actually a suboptimal material for blades. It does not get as hard as steel, meaning the edge retention is not so good. And it's a pain to grind. The first two are kind of my problem, giving it edge retention as well as giving it enough mass to slice a mat. The second one is Matt's problem, as he will have to be grinding this whole blade with his sunglasses on in the dark. To get an even thickness down the length of the blade, he's going to be using what we call a kiss block, which is just a preset thickness piece of steel that he's able to put on the dies of the hammer. And as the hammer comes down and drives the hot material, it'll only go down as far as the kiss block. You'll notice that the oxidation on the surface of this titanium is actually in rainbow colors. It's what we call a reactive metal. This effect can be shown both through heat and using electricity. In this case, the heat oxidizes the surface and shows us color. So for the handle on Blade's sword, we're going to be working in a couple of different pieces. We've got to be inside this pipe for the mechanism for the blades, but we've got to have something that's fairly structural, so we're going to use a large piece of aluminum. This is what sockets inside of that pipe to lock it in place. So I'm going to free turn this, to put the curvature in and a couple other cuts, and then we'll polish it out. Most of it gets painted black anyway. So we'll be using this pipe. You can see I've laid out a series of lines. I'll draw some more to make it a little bit easier. It's fairly shallow where we have to cut, but we've got to make a series of them. They'll all be bright initially, obviously, coming off the lathe, and then we're going to paint the entire piece black and polish those different raised sections out, and then the mechanism will be set and set. Now that Ilya, aka our resident daywalker, has the blade forged, it's time to begin the grinding process. Now, we have never made a titanium sword blade on this show or in general, but we have made the X23 claws, and if there's anything you guys remember about that build, it's that when I grind on titanium, it sparks ultra white. So I have some tinted glasses. It's also really bad for you to breathe. So I'm gonna wear a respirator and a full face shield while I do this. My first goal is to profile the sword blade up here at the point, a little bit on the sides, and then I'm gonna grind the whole flat of it completely clean so that when I go to do the hollow ground edges, they stay nice and crisp. 
All right, so I'm not exactly where I want to be, but to give you guys a little perspective, I've now burned through three of these 24 grit blaze belts. They're about the best you can buy in the industry. They're about $50 a piece, so that's $150 worth of belts I burned through. And I'm still not anywhere close to where I want to be on these flats. But luckily, when you go to hollow grind, you're using a much smaller surface area, so it should hollow grind the edges a little easier. So at this point, I'm gonna stop worrying about cleaning up the flats so much and just move on to the edges. Due to the abrasion resistant nature of this material, Matt's gonna have to use a smaller wheel that has a smaller contact patch and a brand new belt. It's gonna go through quite a bit of abrasives on this. Cost a little bit of money to make this happen, but we'll eventually get through it. Now that I've finished doing the lathe work and a little bit of cleanup, I've got to make a slot for the blade to set in. I've marked it where the blade's going to go through and drilled it from behind. That's going to relieve some of the work that I have to do with the milling cutter. I'm going to go down the center, find that center hole that I drilled back through, go ahead and make the slot. This is the width of the tang. This is the width of the shoulders. And then I'm going to make the shoulders of where I cut in so the shoulder of the blade sits slightly down into it. That'll make this a lot more rigid, give it a lot of strength as we assemble. All right, I got the bulk of my edges now roughed out on the 80 grit. My edges wandered just slightly, but that's no big deal. I'll be able to clean all that up through the finer grits. I've been at this for a long time. I've burned through almost a dozen sanding belts. One of the things I found out is I'm having to rely on my instincts while grinding this. I'm pretty much blindfolded. If I wear the shaded glasses, I can only see where the white sparks cast light, which is on the back side of the blade. You know, I've always bragged that I could grind swords blindfolded but I never really wanted to actually try it. The mechanism for the finger slicing blades on the sword is actually fairly simple. It's a version of an umbrella. So you have a stationary bobbin that holds the blades together inside the handle. Then there's a moving bobbin pushed by a push spring. The curve in the blades themselves allows for the movable bobbin to slide and push them out of the slots milled in the sides of the handle. So here we have the stationary bobbin, right? The bobbin has a groove lathed into it, and the blades are held by a slip spring. So the blade, there's a curve. This curve is very important. There's going to be a movable piece, and this slides in and out. And we have a push spring, which works by compression. So as this pushes, in, it presses on this area right here, and this protrudes out. The only issue is locking it in and hiding it inside the handle. So there's an order of operations going on. There are slots cut in here. There's a sliding second piece of pipe on top. The piece of pipe has the continuation of these slots milled in right here. And it rotates. So you push the button, the spring pushes, and the spokes boop, pop out. This is actually the key to transforming a blade sword from a prop to something that's very close to how you see it in the movie. All right, guys, at this point, I have the bulk of my grinding done. The last phase of stock removal before I move on to polishing is to crisp up the plunge grind down here at the end of the blade. I haven't been able to see very well, so my plunges are ever so slightly off and it's really bugging me. So what I did was I took two pieces of steel, drilled a quarter inch hole through them, bolted through so it's clamped on, 
so I can make those cut-ins match perfectly. So now we've got the handle cut. Billy has given me a few instructions of how he wants things changed for the internal workings. He's mocked up what the blades are gonna be. The pieces are locked in with a spring. These are 1095. So I've gotta make some slots that are gonna allow those to pop out of the handpiece. One of the things I had to do was take that back ring off because that's gonna become part of the pommel and it's gonna be part of the locking mechanism that we use to actuate the blades. I'm gonna put this first slot in and then I'm gonna locate the other slots based on where they are on the carrier. Now that we have all the handle parts figured out, Lily's done a really good job doing that. I have to start creating that two-tone look like you see in the movie. To do that, I'm gonna use some acid black. I'm gonna darken the entire handle and then scrub the surface to get that highlight look. So this is pretty similar stuff to the black oxide compound you see us use in the past. EPA decided that you really shouldn't have that, so one more coat. The nice advantage of doing this over painting is that it won't rub off. It's pretty, it's a chemical reaction. All right, let's wash it with water. Use an abrasive and just kind of skate the surface and highlight it. All right, from here, we're gonna move to the Scotch-Brite wheel outside for our final finish. I have all the parts for the sword. Here they are. The way to assemble is, here are my protruding blades. First, I capture them inside the handle. Make sure they don't fold in. Take the tang. Good. So this is the capturing. Captures the pipe so it doesn't open up. Floating bobbin, also known as a push bobbin, acting like a piston compression spring. Right about there, hold my blades in. Now the locking mechanism. This fork is the pusher. It pushes the spring into position. And here's the pump. All right. They work. The only thing that's left is to introduce the runes onto the handle of the blade. I'm going to use my hand cutters cut in the outline, black in the background, leaving the rune white. We always forget when we go into a titanium blade just how much more difficult that is to forge and even more so to grind and polish the pieces. Came out great. We're gonna be able to show you how this thing's gonna work. We'll just have to be careful with our hands as we do it. Today's episode in 4K was brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch to America's best unlimited network.